Action. Hello, welcome to the Hoverfly Lagoon project. Um, my name is Ellie Rotheray. I'm going to go through how to create your Hoverfly Lagoon and how to survey it or look for the larvae and the pupae. So what we're suggesting people do this time is use uh, milk, plastic milk bottles. Um, just cut to where the spout comes. Um, and this is the first time we're attempting this, so we'll have to just see how it goes. Um, so I'm going to set up a silage lagoon, which is with um, cut grass, basically, from just normal lawn grass. And in here there's about 100 grams of cut lawn grass. And we literally just pop that in there, um, and it should look about like that at this stage, and then top it up with water. So the water does come over the level of the grass like this. Um, now that's going to decay down to very little so over time we, we will ask you to, to top it up with some more cut grass but we'll keep you updated on that. And then just put a layer of leaf litter over the top like that. Now that allows the adults to come down and perch onto the surface and oviposit their eggs wherever they like in the leaf litter or around the leaf litter. And it also gives a purchase to um, the larvae themselves. But okay. they do need sticks as well, which is something. So if we pop in some sticks, long kind of sticks that go from the bottom of the lagoon up to the surface. And this basically allows the larvae to cling on to these sticks. Size. And this is one that's actually been rotting for a year, and this is the kind of consistency that it will turn into. Um, and what I will do now is actually go through this lagoon and try and find some larvae to show you what they actually look like. So this is more the, the, the level of the sticks that you might want to have sticking out right down to the bottom of the lagoon to give the larvae something to purchase on. So I'll just remove these. That's any larvae on them. So, what the easiest way of doing this is certainly with, uh, well, with all of them, is to have a tray like this, some kind of tray where you can actually pour the content of your lagoon into. So if we just pour that in, and then we can actually go through the content. You might want to use a stick or something. And here we have hoverfly larvae. So this is what you're looking for. This is a long-tailed larvae or rat-tailed maggot. Telltale by the nice white body there. And this is the long breathing tube. And they feed underneath the water like this with the breathing tube extended up to the surface. So this is a beautiful example of what you want. We want we're asking you to count. And another one. See here. Another one. So, if you can just go through the content, the entire content of your lagoon, it may take a few minutes. Here's another one. Awesome example. Pop that in. So, once you've finished going through the content of your of your lagoons, then just pour it back. It'll be absolutely fine. With anything like wood chips, you might want to consider um, doing it quite carefully, just in case you've missed a few. It's very easy to miss some, but don't worry too much about that. Um, but with silage, we can just pour it back in, and they will be fine. So you can see the consistency. It's really lovely, rotted down grass. It stinks. It smells beautiful to hoverflies. And then we want to pop the sticks back in. We do this a little bit carefully, just in case you 
There are some still in there. And then just pop the larvae back in and pop them on the sticks and they'll just crawl back in. here and already see one here really nice just give it a little bit of a wash there is one hoverfly larvae with its long breathing tube and what we'll do is pop these in a little dry tray um, to count. So what I'm going to do is actually cover the larvae with a bit of leaf litter just to keep it happy. Um, otherwise it, they do try and escape. They want to try and find somewhere to crawl to. And here's another one. These are nice and big. And they look like they're not far from pupating really. Just pop that in there as well. And if you can just break up the sawdust into the water, it kind of dissolves. And if you move it around, the larvae tend to float to the surface. And it's a very easy way to look for them. Sawdust is a very good option if you aren't a massive fan of the smell of silage. So, there's another one, just floated to the surface. So in this situation, it's a good idea to make sure there's a layer of leaf litter over the top. It's, it's fine for the water to come over the sawdust or um, silage, because that will happen. Um, so there will be a layer of water here. But try and certainly make sure there's enough of these sticks coming above the surface for the larvae to cling onto and adults when they're coming to deposit. And nice layer, just use this, of leaf litter over the top. Now this will decay into the lagoon, so you need to just keep an eye on it and make sure there is always something coming above the surface of the water. The other advantage of having the leaf litter like this um, on top of the, the layer of water is that it puts mosquitoes off. You won't have so many mosquitoes um, inhabiting the lagoons as well. The final stage of creating your hoverfly lagoon involves uh, creating a pupation tray like this. So there's lots of holes in the bottom It's um, that we've drilled in all the way around. Um, so the rainwater, it's very important that the water drains through these uh, pupation sites. And it's filled with leaf litter, bark, bits of bark, and even a little bit of soil on the bottom. Um, and these are perfect for the pupae. The pupae will, the, the larvae will crawl out of the lagoons Um, crawl out the side of the lagoons and into this and hopefully we'll just pupate in the tray and when you're ready to look through the tray for pupae um, just take out the, the lagoon take your tray and empty the content into the tray and search for your pupae and we'll do that just now so we search through the, um, the pupation stuff and look here's Here's a perfect example of a puparia. So this is a, you can see it's still got the tail on the end. Um, but this is now, they don't use this to breathe anymore. They use these little anterior spiracles on the other side. You probably won't be able to see, but these are very important um, for them to be able to breathe. Um, they can grow quite long and if they snap off that might mean that the larvae actually dies inside. Um, so you do need to be a little bit careful when handling these. Um, and then just pop them in a tube, maybe with a bit of tissue paper. Um, and pop this over the top, the elastic band tube or a jar, it doesn't really matter, just a dry receptacle that allows them to breathe. Put this in a sheltered place, in a cool sheltered area, shaded area, and the adults will emerge from the pupae and generally sit on the top waiting or trying to escape.
for you to identify them. 